Hi, this is Tim Vasquez, meteorologist in Palestine, Texas, and I'm, this is geared more towards the uh, beginners and newcomers to weather, and I wanted to show you a little bit about charts you can find on the internet to kind of help you plan the forecast, and if the meteorologist on TV isn't really telling you the whole story or you need a little bit more detail, there's a ton of stuff on the internet you can go to, and I'll, I'll show you some of the basics here. I've got the weather service page up. This is weather.gov and this is probably your most basic starting point. So when you go to that site you've got a map showing all of the current weather hazards, watches, warnings, and uh, advisories. And they're all color coded. Uh, in fact uh, this is off the screen but uh, down at the bottom there's a legend that shows what those are all for. Most uh, beginners and intermediate level folks like to go straight to the radar because that tells you exactly what's on the way. Uh, we have a Doppler radar mosaic here, but it's all, uh, much more helpful to go down to the individual sites. So how do you do that? You go down here to the national radar sites. That brings up a map of all the radars in the U.S. There's about 130 of them, I believe, something like that. Uh, you just click on your nearest site, so maybe we'll do Fort Worth here, and that brings up current radar picture. There's nothing to look at here in Fort Worth, so we'll back up and go to Jackson. They're getting a lot of showers and thunderstorm acti activity there. It's pushed on off to the south, so we'll skip down to New Orleans. So kind of a rainy Sunday afternoon down there, but this shows you pretty good uh, view of the uh, precipitation, storms, and so on. The heavier stuff is going to be in red, and it's actually not just the colors you want to look at, but the patterns. Where you have this more cell cellular appearance, that's going to be your heaviest thunderstorm activity. When you have more of a spread out appearance, this is weaker. That's not to say there isn't lightning in there. In fact, there frequently is in the trailing region behind a thunderstorm, but you're not going to have any of the strong intense winds back here and not much of any tornado threat back here. Now if I want to loop this that's really easy. Look on off to the left of your panel and you've got a bunch of options. One thing you notice is composite and base. What is the difference between those? Well right now we're looking at the base reflectivity. This is using one tilt like the radar antenna is shooting uh, just a hair above the horizon and you're getting everything that the radar is detecting in that sweep right there. But if you want to look higher in the storms and look at all the levels and pick out which is uh, which reflectivity above a, gir a given spot is highest, you'll want to go to composite. This will give you like the worst case scenario. And you can see that these these echoes here, they do bloom. Compare that with base and composite. So this is a worst case scenario. This kind of tells you exactly what is up in the cloud, what's uh, just above the surface. So if anything is like lurking where the low level sweep isn't detecting, you can go to your composite and you'll be sure that you're detecting everything. I wouldn't use this to try to find tornadoes or Im important signatures like that, but composite is kind of like a go-to if you just want to see what's out there. There's a velocity. I'm not going to really get into these. There's rainfall that can help you. There's one hour total. You can look on the scale to the bottom right and that shows you the total in inches. Okay, so there's the radar. Let me go back to weather.gov. I'll just type that in real quick and we'll go back and check that out. Now one thing that's pretty cool about the US forecast map is you can click on any location. Like if so you're living in Iowa and you're out there in the cornfields, you just click on your location and it brings up your local weather service office shows any warnings that are in effect, warnings, watches, and that kind of thing, and you can click on your county to get even more information. So we wait for that to come up, and that will give us uh, our basic forecast from the National Weather Service, the current conditions, and a rough forecast down at the bottom. Now if you scroll down, you get your basic uh, breakdown of the conditions on each day and one little thing that's very helpful see this forecast discussion you want to click on that if you want to get more information about your local forecast picture now this is kind of technical but a lot of times these are readable this is a narrative 
written by the forecaster there at the Weather Service office, in this case in Des Moines, and he, it's telling you what he's thinking, what's going through his mind, and what kind of patterns he's looking at for the upcoming 24 or 48 hours. And then there's a long-term outlook that goes into the next week. And if you scroll down further, there's an aviation forecast. So if you're flying a general aviation airplane or commercial planes, that'll kind of give you an idea of what they're expecting for the terminals there. So th those are a few helpful things in the Weather Service forecast. Now, if you want to go to more of a variety of products, I'm going to show you a secret link. This goes to my website, weathergraphics.com slash WX. This is kind of my roaming bookmarks. I've been using this for like 10 or 15 years. And you're welcome to use this and click on the sites. It's divided into different types of products. Like if you want to go to the radar, um, there's stuff from College of DuPage, which is a good site. Some of these graphics are better than what the Weather Service has. So here's all the precip in East Texas. There's nothing there. But if you go out towards Louisiana, I don't have any links for that, but I can bring up the uh, two kilometer imagery for Mississippi. So there's a bunch of thunderstorms down there in the Delta Country and out towards Mobile and Pensacola. And there's other products. There's satellite. There's a huge variety of stuff here. If you want to look at Colorado, for example, and look at the satellite picture, you just click on that. And there we go. They've had a heck of a monsoon pattern over the weekend. There's been a lot of rain in the Rocky Mountain region. That's from moisture that's been streaming up from the Gulf and from the Gulf of California also. And that's producing a lot of afternoon thunderstorm activity through the higher terrain there. Most of this is just anvil debris from the showers. But you can check it out and see if anything's heading in your way. There's animations and there's also, if you want to look at the analysis to find out the current conditions, see if a front's on the way, you can go to analysis and click on one of these locations I got here. And if they're not listed, you just go over to the left side where I've got the source web page and you can click it there. So Minneapolis, click on that. You don't have to be an expert to understand this. The uh, red number is the, temp the, the uh, temperature. The bottom left number is a measure of, of moisture, which is uh, the dew point. And the uh, little flag sticking out, that points into the wind. So you can see the winds are going from south to north across Minnesota. And right up there, there's a new cold front heading southeastward. So new fresh air, cold air coming in from Canada, and temperatures look pretty cool up there. In fact, we can click on the Canadian, I got Saskatchewan right here. 60 degree temperatures, even 50s up there near Cold Lake in Alberta. I guess they got some drilling operations as you get, get up towards Cold Lake. 66 there, so pretty brisk there. And further south, you can see there's clouds. See those symbols right there where it's kind of filled in? This indicates where there's overcast conditions, so you can use that to see if there are clouds on the way. And the very last thing, uh, I don't want to make this video too long, but uh, you can also go to the actual warnings. There's a site called iWin. They used to broadcast a lot of Weather Service products over uh, satellite, and you could receive them with a small dish. They intended to shut down the website like 10 years ago, but they kind of left it online. And this is a good place to get products. You just select your location, like Idaho, and it goes right into the different products. Like if you want to see the weather summary, you just keep clicking. There's nothing there. But uh, let's see, public information. Yeah, there's a storm report from Missoula. So this tells you that a train spotter observed a small branches that were downed. So you can kind of bookmark this and that'll give you another source of weather data. If you want other ideas, uh, feel free to click any of the videos I have in my list and uh, if you like them, please like and subscribe. You know, I know you've probably heard that a thousand times, but I am trying to get this channel off the ground and kind of uh, get some of the videos going. I, I used to do forecast training up in Norman and run classes every spring, but I'm down in Texas now and that's not really possible where I'm at, so I'm trying to kind of move to the internet and try to put out some of these sessions and uh, some of these training courses and hopefully it helps you there. Um, that's about it for me, so 
If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I will be glad to pick that up. I'll either reply online or maybe I'll collect them all and make a video out of it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you later.